Right, gents, what I want to talk to you about today is scaffold inspection and also the components within the scaffold structure. Um, you've got various subcontractors that are wrecked on scaffolding, um, and what we want to do today is uh, ensure that you're aware of what you've got to do and what procedures that you've got to put in place before you put that scaffolding into operation for the first time. So many of you have done scaffold inspections before, um, how many of those certificates are still in date? Not mine. Oh, no. Right. So Chris, I don't remember, yeah. I can't remember when I did the, the one down the office. You did the one down the office. So, so this is really for you as like a refresher. Yeah. yeah. A refresher course. Okay, the, the scaffold components, um, does anybody remember what the upright section of the scaffold is called? Where a pole is upright. Vertical? No. It, well, it should be in the vertical as much as possible. Um, it's called the standard. So the standard is the upright section of the scaffold structure. What about the longitudinal tubes within the scaffold structure? What are those called? They're called the ledgers. Ledgers. Ah, ledgers. Ledgers. Right. Now, ledgers. on top of the ledgers go other tubes. And um, one of the tubes is the main uh, transom, which goes across the ledgers where the scaffold boards will sit on. What about the tubes in between those main transoms? Anybody, any idea what those may be called? Braces? It's the intermediate transoms. So you need to support the scaffold boards every 1.2 meters. But I say that, on the end of a scaffold board, there's various bits of information. Um, and one of those pieces of information is um, at what spacing you support the scaffold boards. And it's normally 1.2 meters for a 38 millimeter scaffold board. And then you'll have your guardrails. You'll have your top guardrail and you'll have an intermediate guardrail and your tow board. Now in between the tow board, which effectively is a scaffold board put on its edge, which is 225 mil in height, a normal tow board only needs to be six inches high as per the legislation. But any gap between the tow board and the intermediate guardrail and the top guardrail mustn't be greater than 470 mil to stop you falling through. Now, when you're working on a working platform of a scaffold structure, you mustn't store anything on the working platform of the scaffold higher than the tow board because then it's a danger of objects and materials falling from the structure. If you need to do that, then you fit a brick guard, which is a, a mesh guard which hangs off of the top guardrail and is um, clipped over the tow board. Other than that, you will have um, facade bracing on the scaffold structure, which is uh, diagonal bracing across the facade of the scaffold. The scaffold also may well be tied into the building by a resin anchor tie, and you must test or the scaffold company if they do those they must test every 10 so one in 10 for those ties when you erect a scaffold structure you must not have the scaffold structure further away from the building greater than 300 millimeters and that's to stop you from falling down through so where the inside upright pole the standard is against the building if you want to work really close to the <coughs> building, then you could then have the inside board and effectively you wouldn't have any gap at all. But doing your line of work, painting, cladding, repairs, then you, it's handy to have that 300 millimeter gap between the scaffold structure and the face of the building. Um, if, for instance, you've got to put um, tarpaulins on a scaffold because you want to keep your work area dry, you run a greater risk of the scaffold collapsing or blowing away. So you need to increase your ties, you need to have a positive tie, which is a two-way tie, a resin anchor tie, or a tie through a window, or a door opening, um, or a buttress on the outside of the scaffold, or a rake scaffold tube, which basically is a 45 degree angle scaffold tube against the facade of the scaffold structure. Right, so you've got the scaffold erected by your scaffold company. Do they normally supply you with ladders? They don't, do they? No. Right, so when you erect your 
uh, ladder or pitch your ladder to the scaffold, the ladder must extend above the working platform by 1.05 meters or five rounds of the ladder. And it must also be tied to the scaffold structure as well. Okay. So any questions so far? Right. When your scaffold company erects a scaffold, um, they will give you a handover certificate. That certificate is no assurance that the scaffold is safe to work on. All that handover certificate does is um, tell you what that scaffold is capable of doing. So the greater that the standards are together in spacing, the more direct load capability that scaffold will have. So with a standard scaffold having two metre wide bays in between the standards, that's just a general purpose scaffold. If you were perhaps doing stonework um, or having heavy items or RSJ <coughs> scaffold, you then need to bring those standards closer together from say two meters down to one and a half or even one meter apart to create a greater load uh, capability. Um, also, where your ladders are attached to the scaffold, you may find due to the configuration of the, um, the, the working platform, you need a, a gate or a loading bay. Um, these also must be so constructed within the scaffold structure that it, there's no risk from objects, materials, or persons falling from that height. Now, if you're doing a massive block of flats, and you've got one single entrance um, to, the, to the flats, <coughs> say a series of double doors, or a wide pathway. Where that scaffold structure envelopes around the doorway, um, normally you would see a scaffold fan. Has anybody heard of a scaffold fan? Mm -hmm. Basically, from the, the face of the building, you'll have a, a, a section of scaffold pitched at around 40 degrees um, over the doorway at height, oh, right. um, fully boarded. So if anything does fall from the scaffold, Collected um, by the scaffold fan, um, and in some cases, those fans must be uh, purposely designed by um, someone that's qualified to do so. So, what you'll get then is you'll get the handover certificate from the scaffold company, and basically, that's telling you what the capabilities of that scaffold structure are. But that's no assurance of the scaffold itself um, being correct. So you need to inspect that scaffold structure. And that scaffold structure needs to be inspected uh, for the first time that it's um, put in use, every seven days, after any adverse weather condition, or before it's dismantled, and if there's any major adaptions within the scaffold structure. So it needs to be inspected every time, recorded in the register, or put on your uh, scaffold tag, which hangs on your scaffold structure. The scaffold structure needs to be inspected before it's dismantled as well and recorded in the register or put on the scaffold tag um, that's hanging within the scaffold structure itself. Another thing that you also need to be mindful of is, um, is children, um, members of the public that might want to use it as a climbing frame. So it's about making that scaffold secure as well, putting it behind a security fence and also, what you really need to consider as well, during school holidays as well, children coming out onto the scaffold structure through their bedroom windows. Whilst I say that, you still can't make it impossible for someone to open the window and have safe egress from the building because in the event of a fire, they could be, they could be trapped in there. So you need to be very mindful of, um, of that. Also, you have problems with satellite dishes as well, having those um, those moved and repositioned. So is that particular work, is that work done is it by that company or by yourself as a lone work um, environment situation? Well, we do it, you know, we yeah. do very occasionally. Yeah. yeah. But if they're not, if they're not on site and then there's yeah. a weekend, and they need to have access to their satellite dish, then they have to do it. You don't have the option of calling up the scout and coming on before you have to need to get them to come up to a just there. Okay. So we all can remember what the upright sections of the scaffold are called. Standards. Standards. Well, I didn't say, Colin, when you said about the scaffold, 
like uh, the same as Scott, eh? So you also have to record that in a... I would as a matter of course, mm -hmm. because you've got a hard... You've got a hard copy then, because if someone came along and removed the scrap tag, yeah. where's your records? And in a court of law, if there's nothing written down, you didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And the magistrate could say, well, where's the written evidence that you did that? Oh, my scrap tag was stolen. So as a belt and braces, it is nice to put it in a register as well as put it okay. on, on the scrap tag. The scrap tag tells anybody using the scaffold Immediately it's been inspected. The last inspection that when it was carried out, is it safe to use? If it's not, the scaffold tag won't be in there and it will be the back plate of the scaffold tag holder which says do not use scaffold. So it is a nice backer to write it in your scaffold register. And similarly with your ladders as well, they will go into the same register. So the ladders being numbered yeah. and those inspections. And um, someone did mention it not so long ago, how often, I would record the ladders in the register also on a weekly basis as well. And um, it just has to be a visual inspection, you know, anything broken, twisted, damaged, and if it is damaged then skip it and replace it. Right gents, in the classroom we identified all the various components of the scaffold structure. Um, anybody remember what this is? Standard. A standard. And facade bracing, the longitudinal tubes. Um, in this case, this is zigzag bracing because it's going up that way and then across that way. But if it was through the whole facade of the scaffold, then that's just one longitudinal uh, diagonal. Um, we spoke about our ledgers and our transoms and the intermediate transom to support the scaffold board. In this case, there's no requirement for this intermediate transom to be there for the simple reason that's not being used as a working platform. So it doesn't actually need to be there. It's only there to support the scaffold, uh, scaffold board. Other components are tow boards, our scaffold boards on the working platform. We have a gate up there but that is illegal. That gate is absolutely useless because if you remember in the classroom, any gap within the scaffold structure that's greater than 470 mil, which is likely for you to um, fall through. So that gap in that door or that scaffold gate, there's no mesh on it, so you could actually fall through that gate. So that gate is a bit of a nonsense. Um, other parts of the scaffold, we're looking at, um, this is a swivel clip, this is a single, and I'm just looking for a double. And because of the nature of this scaffold, oh, there's a double up there where the guardrail meets the top of the, um, the standard. Now we spoke about scaffold inspections, um, scaff tag, uh, scaffold to be inspected before it's brought into service for the very first time. This one's being displayed up there. Um, ideally it would be nice to have it down at ground level so you can actually see that it's been inspected because that means you've got to go on the scaffold to inspect it but I can also see the train of thought there um, location of the scaffold the tag could be stolen so it's a great idea to have that backup of putting the um, scaffold inspection into the register as well as having the scaffold tag system any questions, gents? Right, any scaffold structure that's erected needs to be erected on ground that is, is suitably sufficient to hold the weight of that scaffold. What we've got here, we've got sole boards and we've got base plates because, as you can appreciate, if you didn't have your sole board or your base plate, that standard would just sink into the ground. Um, if it was a concrete floor, then I wouldn't bother with the uh, sole board, I'd just have the base plate. And if it was on a steel structure, then the standard could just sit on the uh, steel structure. So, any questions, gentlemen? No? That's about it then. Right. So this gate here is correct, it's got the mesh on. There's no gaps in the gate which are greater than 470 mil. So this particular scaffold would pass where the other one failed the inspection.